Welcome everybody, my name's Sam. I'm taking you through SkySiv Online Engineering Software's tutorial. Today we're doing six degrees of freedom, which is the degrees of freedom of any object in 3D space. So what are the six degrees of freedom? Um, they're a really important part of uh, support or connectivity um, when you're doing um, structural analysis. So it, often they're misunderstood. Uh, it's quite a difficult thing to grasp at first, but once you completely understand it, it will take you through the rest of your engineering career and studies. So what are the six degrees of freedom? First we have the X translation, Y translation, Z translation, then we have X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. Now what translation means is basically moving along an axis. So here we have the local axis of this object, which is my eraser. X translation, which is the first degree of freedom, is basically just the movement along that X axis. Likewise we have Y translation, is just the movement up and down and Z would be in and out of the page, so that's in the Z. So that's our translations, they make up the first three degrees of freedom. The second set of three degrees of freedom are the rotations. So our X rotation is just the rotation about the X axis. So that's our X axis there, you can see that the eraser is rotating about that axis. Um, then we have Y, which is rotating about the Y, and finally Z, rotating about the Z axis there. So that's your, your six degrees of freedom, and now we're going to show you how to apply those. Okay, so one of the most common applications of the degrees of freedom are in your supports. Uh, it's, it's particularly useful in structural analysis where you need to restrain this node here, um, and you need to give it a, some sort of code to know where it's restrained, um, which one of these six degrees of freedom it's released and which ones are fixed. Um, how we do this is a six digit, or six character, connectivity code um, comprised of F's which equals fixed and R's which equal released. Okay, so basically an easy way to remember is anywhere there's an R there's a degree of freedom which means that it can move. So an R for instance on a roller would be in the X because it can move along that X, it's not fixed there. So I'll take you through these three simple support types, um, they're quite common, you've probably seen them before I'll just give you the codes to them um, and just sort of give you an understanding of how to use them. So the first one's a fixed support, I'm sure you've come across it, it's a very rigid support so you cannot translate it, it does not translate up or down, left or right, it does not rotate, it is fixed. So that node here is completely fixed to the point where you'll get, you know, you'll get your Y reaction, you'll get an X reaction, you'll get a rotation or a bending moment uh, reaction there as well. Um, and that code here will just be simply FFF, FFF. F, F. So the first three F's say it doesn't translate, it does not move back or forth. And the last three F's means it does not rotate, it's fixed. Um, the second type is a pin support, which is basically like a hinge. So the only um, released degree of freedom we have is in that Z rotation, where it rotates like that. It cannot rotate like that, it cannot rotate about itself cannot move backwards, it cannot move forwards, it cannot move up or down, you get the picture. So it has no, so it's fixed in all three translations because it cannot move back or forth, up or down. Also, it's fixed. Fixed. And the only released degree of freedom is that Z rotation, that sixth degree of freedom there. That's why I put an R there. Um, finally, in this case, we have a, a roller support. Now, in this case, if we go through each of the three, we can see X translation. If I push on this beam, if I push on this beam, it's going to move. That, is, that support does not offer any restraint. It'll just roll, it'll move. So, we're going to start off with an R because of that. Um, if I try and push down, the support will support it and I'll get a reaction here. Therefore, it is fixed. Likewise, in the, in the Z, it's going to be fixed, and then it's going to be released in all three degrees of, uh, in all three rotations. So if you just picture a ball socket joint, it's able to rotate about any axis, so you can just move around like that. Um, just another note here, um, you will also notice, I'm not sure if you've noticed the pattern, but wherever there's an F, you will get a reaction. So for instance, if I take this pin support here, I have F, F, F. So all three of my translations are fixed. I will get an X reaction, sorry, a Y reaction. I will get an X reaction, and I'll also get a Z reaction. So that's what that another way to sort of check your work is. 
Okay, so uh, likewise, these sort of also, also operate the same way as connectivity types. So if I have two members and you want to give a code to how they're connected, a fixed support there or a fixed connect, connect, connection would just mean that um, any, any force or moment that is passed on from this member will be passed on through the other member. So you can apply these same codes to member connectivity. Um, and it's another sort of practice or another application of these degrees of freedom. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, these, these codes are particularly useful in structural analysis software. Um, you use them on our trusts, our free trusts or our paid trust calculators. Um, also, and more importantly, our 3D structural analysis software, um, where you need to get a really good understanding of these. Uh, they're really important because they do, they can affect your model quite, quite severely. Uh, and if you do do them incorrectly, it could warp your results completely. You know, they could be completely wrong, really. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Look forward to hearing all your comments. Uh, visit skysiv.com for any other online calculator engineering um, tools that you need. And otherwise, I look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks.